of what you say. And I kept telling myself, even though to me it seems like it's a long road to travel, I should not interfere with her dream. Because perhaps God is showing her something that I haven't seen yet. Because you never know what God is going to do and how he's going to do it and who he's going to do it through. So you have to be careful. Hallelujah. I said that to say that if God is internally showing her something up the road that I don't see because it's not me or because he hasn't revealed it to me, that does not mean that God is not showing it to her. Hallelujah. There's some other great people in this room that are believing God for great and mighty, extraordinary things. I don't know who you are and what you are believing God. Some of you I know. But I don't know who else may be believing God for something great. But if he's put it in your spirit and is internally operating in you, then guess what? No one can stop you because if God gives you the vision, then he gives you the provision. If you believe him, hallelujah, no matter what it looks like, then he can make sure that you get to where he wants you to go. See, this is the thing. But I firmly, firmly believe that it must be a God-given vision. Because if God gives it to you, then he's responsible for getting you to that place where you can actually see the manifestation of what he showed you. So if God gives it to you, then he's going to make sure that you get there. You just got to believe every step of the way. That's one thing that's powerful about a vision. Once you see it, it keeps you motivated, it keeps you excited, and see when God gives it to you, even though you may get a little weary sometime along the way, you going to stay on course because you see something. Hallelujah. Watch this. When we get into Numbers, the third chapter, when you look at the, uh, the storyline, you had 12 men that went out to survey the promised land. And when they went out, they visited or they saw the promised land. And they came back with the report. It is, as we have heard, it does flow with milk and honey. It does have all the green grass. It has all of the fruit. Hallelujah, and it is beside the water. It's beautiful to look upon. But out of that 12, out of those 12 men, one from each tribe, two had a positive report, and the other 10 had a negative report. But well, watch this. I'm going to read to you what, was, what they said. There's a couple of things I want to point out to you, and then I'm going to close. And that is Numbers 13 chapter. If you look at, if you have your Bibles, if you look at starting with verse 29, and it reads, the Amalekites dwelled in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwelled in the mountain, and the Canaanites dwelled in the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quiet the people before Moses and said, watch this, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Let me hold this. This is my point. Isn't it amazing how you have a group of people to go out and see something or uh, encounter a certain experience, but they leave with different they leave with different uh, perceptions of what they saw and what happened in the midst. See, when they went out, you had two to come back and said, "We can do it." Then you have ten to come back and say, "Man, hey, they don't need." We're going to get messed up on that hilltop. There was, them jokers giant. They eating up each other. They doing all kinds of things. We not at all. We can't do it. And you know, it just ain't going to work. This is the difference. The two that had the positive 
report. They saw God enabling them to go up and to defeat the enemy. But the other 10, see the two was envisioning God helping them. They saw God helping them. That's my point. But the 10, they didn't see God helping them. They saw them trying to do it in their own ability. Did you catch that? I hope I'm making it clear. Let me say it one more time. Two of them saw God helping them go up and defeat the enemy. The other 10 saw themselves try to go up and fight the enemy. That's why their perception of what they saw and what they were capable of doing was different. Look at it, it's right here in the Word. It's right here in the Word. Now let me read a little further, and then I'm going to close out. Ah, sorry, I'm kind of something. Okay, let's start right here. We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. See, they already said they're stronger than us. You see that? So their vision of God helping them was the story. Watch this. And then it says, And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. So we understand they were giants, they were big men, they were probably strong and they probably looked like Conan and Barbarian or something. Their word, watch this, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Abraham, come from the giants. And we were, watch this, this is where, this is where, this is where, this, this is what I'm about to tell you, man. And we were like grasshoppers in our, watch this, come on, man, man. I wish I had your Bible, because some of you not looking at your Bible. Watch this, we are, we are like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, you surveyed the land from a distance. The folks never saw you. But the Bible is saying that they see us, basically, they are superior and we are inferior is what they were saying. But the giants in the land never seen them. But in their own mind, their vision was so distorted that they saw themselves less than the people in the land. They didn't see God helping them defeat the enemy. So this is my point. You have to see yourself in Christ in order to have the right vision or the right perception of who you are in God. You got to see it. You got to know it for yourself. You have to understand who you are in Christ. Old things have passed away. We know all things have to come new. I'm a new creature in Christ. So therefore, everything that the Bible says is yours, you got to believe that it's yours. So your vision got to be corrected in some areas. Sometimes God has to deal with me and say, hey, you're not looking at this thing right. Let's reevaluate. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet. Glory to God. Did you enjoy that word? Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord. And I understand where he's coming from.